Hi, I'm Corey Shockey, a research fellow at the Hoover Institution, and I also teach thinking about war at Stanford. I'm an expert on national security policy, do a lot of work on war strategy and budgets. Reputation plays a really important role in foreign policy because if you make empty threats, your enemies believe they can challenge you and your friends are fearful you won't carry out your promises. And so it makes you actually more likely to have to fight wars in order to prove that you're willing to do what you say you're going to do. So it's actually a really good question whether challenging the making of empty threats isn't just a way to legitimate using military force. I actually think the era goes the other direction, right? If you don't want to use military force, don't make threats of any kind. If you want to use military force, say you're going to do it and do it. The problem of empty threats is that it falls in the gray area middle where nobody knows what to think. And so just to take a concrete example, President Obama saying that the use of chemical weapons in Syria would be a red line uh, and being so agonizingly doubtful about that and conveying his totally legitimate concerns about getting involved in the Syrian civil war, projecting those to the public, made the Syrian government tempted to test him, made the Russians not believe him. And then when the Syrian government did use chemical weapons and President Obama chose not to enforce his threat, it actually made America's allies in Asia, in Europe, all around the world more worried that the promises we have made them are more likely to be challenged. So if you don't want to use military force, don't make threats of any kind. But empty threats actually create the greatest likelihood of having to use military force. The Trump administration used military force in April of 2017 to retaliate against the Syrian government's use of chemical weapons in their civil war. There are two reasons that, that the administration took action at that time. The first reason is that every time you have a change of administration, you have an opportunity as the United States to reset your policy. And the administration wanted to make clear that they were going to enforce the policy of prohibiting chemical weapons use that the Obama administration did not enforce. The second reason is that the norm preventing the use of chemical weapons is really important, not just for the civilians who will, are the typical casualties of chemical weapons use, but also for the United States. Because if, if the norms prevent the use of nuclear weapons or chemical weapons on the battlefield, that actually makes it more likely that the United States will win the wars that it fights. So preserving that norm is not only a good thing to do for the advance of civilization, but it also makes it more likely the United States will win, it, win its wars because we have such a powerful conventional force. It's always okay for the United States to act unilaterally when our interests are threatened or Americans are in danger. The United States typically doesn't act unilaterally though because one of the differences between the United States and our adversaries is that we have voluntary allies, countries that share our values, that share our interests, and that want to help shoulder the burden of achieving what we are trying to do in the world. So we tend to want our allies help and they tend to want to give it and that's a really nice affirmation um, for the American public that its government is making good choices and that we play team sports with the countries that want to achieve the same things we do. The only times we tend not to act in concert with our allies tend to be when the degree of difficulty of the military operation is so high or it needs to be done so fast that, that acting alone uh, prevents us from losing the opportunity to act at all. 
Following through on threats and promises can destabilize whole regions. And I think it did destabilize the Middle East when the United States intervened in Iraq. But destabilizing a region isn't always a bad outcome. If the existing stability is unjust, if it's a growing danger to us, if it's a humanitarian depredation on a on a group of people by their own government, destabilizing that situation is actually, can actually be a moral thing to do, a virtuous thing to do, an important national security thing to do. But destabilization can't be the ultimate uh, outcome. That's why defining a clear end state matters so much, because it helps you navigate through the destabilization and continue to act until you achieve a better outcome than what it was you started with. Hey, thanks very much for tuning into this conversation. If you have any other questions, please submit them below. We'd like to have a continuing conversation with you.